Hi there, it's me, Wally, back to take you on a deeper dive of the Pulse Rework Ranger class, focusing on in-depth input and gameplay discussions. If you are wholly new to the class, I would encourage you to visit the sources I have in the description below for basic information, as well as to fiddle with the class on your own first. I would encourage you to pay extra attention to Crit's Book of Combat as it is an exhaustive foundational course on BDO mechanics. The majority of this series will be for succession and large-scale PvP focus, but I will cover Awakening, BDE, and 1v1s as I find necessary. With that said, let us dive into the first topic in this series. Why play this class, and what can each spec do? To answer these questions, we need to consider that Ranger is sharply limited in the niches that each spec fulfills, and is not a one-size-fits-all class. Ranger's two specs are effectively two different classes, and you must either master both specs, or have a tag that makes up for one spec's shortcomings. Both specs are distinctively highly effective in their respective specialization. Succession Ranger is a high-maintenance, high-performance, snowballing, and aggressive hyper-carry for a strong and experienced large-scale guild, while Awakening Ranger is a patient, passive, counter-engage focused duelist. Both specs fall off rapidly in the other's domain, and forcing them to work in the wrong role is suboptimal. You need to either learn both or tag something. Both specs provide a satisfying freedom of action with skill rotations that flow freely back and forth and allows you to add a personal flair to your gameplay. If this sounds like the class for you, then let's take a look at what you need to succeed. Succession Ranger crucially needs gear and guild. Gear goes without saying for DPS hyper carry. The only thing you are bringing to the table as a Succession Ranger is damage, and for that reason, you should have top 10% AP gear in your guild or on your RBF team. As always, have more gear than your opponent. I would consider 309 plus AP with accuracy accessories to be a bare-bones AP goal as of February 2022, but your needs depend on whom you regularly fight. This of course does not apply to cap wars beyond having enough to cap AP with special attack swaps. Guild and team power is an exponentially scaling factor for rangers. The harder the team is winning, the more oppressive rangers are with their 0 to 6 second damage cooldowns. Conversely, the less pressure the guild has, the harder rangers get run over. Be mentally prepared to be useless in a bad fight, but also set yourself high KDA standards for winning fights. Awakening, on the other hand, needs more DP in succession. Now, the same APDR build path functions fine for both, but I will go on to a quick tangent to address one of the worst myths in this community, the idea that DP doesn't matter. To dismiss DP creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. Failure to invest in defense causes the instant kills that seem to vindicate the dismissal of defense. This incentivizing building further defense and causing the cycle to compound. However, itinerant damage is everywhere. They're not always going to be followed up on. You have front guards to trade, you need to live in super armor. Enemies don't always get the perfect combo under pressure. Team player mages and valves, in fact, do actually heal sometimes, and if you are standing close to 7 to 10 or more teammates, any damage in this game will start splitting. DP is critical, damage is survivable, dead players do no damage. For the Awakening side, DP is important to the point where you should be considering a DP hybrid build for only open world and dueling. The specifics of DP hybrid, however, is beyond the scope of this video. It should suffice for you to understand that survivability does matter, especially as the class has received more than enough damage in the rework anyways. No matter what your build is though, the most important thing is to have enough crossover value in your gear. Like it or not, BDO is a gear game. As of the time of the writing of this script in late January, endgame PvP gear sits above 680 GS, with all four top NA guilds sitting at or closing in on 690 average, with many players breaking past the 700 mark. By the mid of the year, that minimum competitive gear in NA will be moving on to the 695 plus to 700 GS range, with average GS pushing close to the 710s. Of course, raw GS is a poor measurement of optimal gear value, yes, but you get the point. 
balance your playtime between pushing hard for gear and pushing hard for PvP experience, and always keep a winner's mindset. And with that, I will see you on the next one.